Hi, I'm Bo, and I created this video in order to share a spreadsheet that I made. This spreadsheet helps me manage different portfolios I work on, whether my own or for my family members. We have different levels of risk aversion. Before I go any further, I want to tell you that asset allocation is not my top priority when it comes to investing. Uh, first and foremost, I am a business investor. I want to find strong businesses and hold them as long as possible. It's like Warren Buffett said, I'm looking for great businesses at fair prices. This spreadsheet helps me look at asset allocation in three different ways. The first is asset type. I got this from Edward Jones, how they run their clients portfolios. I just break down my, my assets a little bit differently. We've got cash, have it saved for a rainy day. If we have another 10% correction, we'll have ability to put some new money to work right away. We don't have to wait for our next paycheck. Income, debt securities, pretty straightforward there. The rest of these asset types are common stocks. Blue chip are companies that are mature. They have slower growth, but they're still growing, and they have an attractive dividend. So they're big companies in mature industries. Johnson & Johnson, Procter & Gamble, Coca-Cola. Growth companies, companies that are still growing at a fast pace, they might be paying a dividend, they might not be, but they're growing faster than the blue chips. They have a solid brand and a sustainable advantage in their in their sector or against their competitors. Aggressive companies are those that are emerging businesses or have emerging technology. They are experiencing significant growth in their revenues and profits if they have them. Finally, we have the resource utility and real estate companies or funds these businesses or funds are those that are investing in real assets hard assets these businesses will be those that are less susceptible to increased rates of inflation now the next way i use this spreadsheet to analyze a portfolio's allocation is by looking at the sector that a common stock would be in i've got them broken down by super sectors cyclical sensitive and defensive and then also within the, those super sectors as well. And that is all determined by Morningstar. The spreadsheet also analyzes the portfolio based on market capitalization. Pretty straightforward, big companies all the way on down. Now what makes this spreadsheet work? Well, it's a heck of a lot of lookup functions and nested if functions. Got a few well-placed macros. A little conditional formatting to help me read it a little bit better and find positions that are overweight or severely underweight. Uh, filters also help me find different things, and there are also a few, quite a few sum if count and concatenate functions. So to import data, I go to this page, and I've got one portfolio in here already, but I'll enter a different one for this example. So let's run that macro. I like to keep these portfolios in Google Finance because it lets me track them on a daily basis. This is really easy for me to do because I'm usually logged into Gmail on my personal computer. So I can go in, uh, see how the portfolio is doing, see if any any company is moving. So then I can download the spreadsheet. Here's our data output. <clears throat> Real easy, just copy and paste. There, on this page, I pull this data from the company data page and the Morningstar data page. The company data page is where I classify each company or holding by asset classification and market cap classification. I pull the sector information from the Morningstar data page. I bring it over to this model page where I can view it a little bit easier. Column A and B will give me a broad overview of what we're trying to do target portfolio. So the portfolio target. Got that set up for me right now. But this was my brother's portfolio. I've got these all set here. We want BJ. Because this is BJ. So pull that down and you can see that we changed the target right there. We see the port so a portfolio size needs to be changed as well. I just round this and I also use that if I want to make an adjustment. What I failed to mention earlier was this spreadsheet's also very useful if I want to project how New holdings will impact the portfolio and the breakdown and allocation of each criterion. So if I'm just going to give this portfolio a checkup, we can say, okay, 
the portfolio is currently valued at about 46.6. So, so after I've entered 46.6 there, that will impact the target weights for each classification and also the weights that would then be targeted for each holding. This just gives me a quick count of the number of holdings in the portfolio, including cash. And if that 46.6 was spread out evenly across all 45 positions, including cash, we'd get a little bit over $1,000. So that's just a, a benchmark or a reference point for me. Equal weighting is also how I allocate funds across each holding within an asset class. It's something that gives me a benchmark. So if I'm bullish on Disney and I want to hold twice equal weight position in it, that's fine. It just gives me a, a point of reference. Here's a little return calculation there. We've got uh, cost basis and the value, and then the yield as well. This is gonna come into play when we look at my father's portfolio, about how much are we gonna be making, so the projected yield. But then the target yield is how much we'd be making if every holding was at the target value. To analyze this portfolio by asset classification, we look at these cells. Here are the asset classifications there. We've got the number of positions broken down, so we know we have more positions in growth stocks than anything else. Here's the target. Here's how we are actually allocated. So we can see we're about 10% over in growth stocks and we have 18. Column H will tell me how much I need to change the, the allocation of the portfolio to bring it within target. Column I would say, hey, this is how much each holding should be if you're going to be within target for the actual allocation across asset classes and then each holding be the same amount within that asset that class. If I'm gonna allocate 35% of a 46.6 portfolio to growth stocks, it's gonna be a total of 16.2. Divide that by 18 companies and you get $900. That means that each position within the growth asset class will be about 2% of the portfolio. And with that, we know that the growth asset classification would be about 34.8 which is right on. In columns N through U, we have the other classifications. We've got sector breakdown and market cap. It's easy to see there. What I'm looking for here is to identify any major holes or just better understand the portfolio. I, between two companies that I'd like to add new money to, if I don't have a clear cut favorite, I can say, okay, I've got a clear hole in communication services, or we don't have much in real estate. If there are two different candidates to add as a position in the portfolio, and it was between a technology stock and a real estate fund, well, we've got a lot of growth and technology stocks already in this portfolio. Uh, I'd, I'd go with the real estate. Now, if you're looking at these three different ways to analyze the allocation of a portfolio, and you want to get dig down a little deeper, I've got a few different ways I can do that. Say I want to look at the classification. I click the sort by class classification, asset classification that is, and it basically sorts column C. So we've got resource on top, income, growth. It's just an easy way to look through the portfolio. I can also sort by sector. So here are all the technology stocks, real estate, industrials. You can also do that with market cap. The small caps are there, large, giant, cash, and funds. So got it broken down like that. Pretty easy to do or if you're looking for a specific company say i want to find disney click alpha sort i don't need to think oh gosh which which way are they classified in these i can just click alpha sort we'll go down by ticker there's disney i could also just isolate using a filter so we just want to look at the mid caps there we go we take out everything else all we see is the mid caps easy to do Clear that puppy. You can do that for any of these different columns. We've also got conditional formatting that will tell me, hey, this is a significant part of the portfolio. So the conditional formatting for the overall percentage of the portfolio, if that's 10, I want to say. Yeah, I think I see a 9. So it must be 10. If it's 10% or higher, it's going to pop up and say, uh, turn yellow. Column M, uh, below row 14 and below will tell me the target allocation for each company. Again, that's a, just a benchmark. It'll give me the target number of shares and the amount I need to subtract from the position or add to the position to bring it within the target allocation. The share adjustment 
as well. So we've got money that needs to change, number of shares that need to be sold or bought. Comp Q will return the percentage of the individual asset class that is made up by that particular holding. So cash is going to be 100% of cash. That turns up yellow there because it's greater than 20. Amazon in this portfolio is 25% of, I think it's aggressive. Now I've also got conditional formatting on the percentage of the adjustment that needs to be made. So here we don't have any cash allocated, so we have to decrease the amount of cash by 100%. Of course, we're not going to do that. Maybe we'll change the target allocation later. That's drilling down. How is this useful? Other than just giving you a checkup, we could say, okay, Brandon is going to add, I don't know, another $1,500 to his portfolio. So let's say he's going to have 48 hundred dollars we know he's got quite a bit of over allocation to growth stocks and he's a bit low on aggressive stocks say we don't have any clear-cut favorite that we want to get in the portfolio well we'll just go over to this field company data we will sort by what we want to add to the portfolio so we want to add aggressive stocks these are the companies that are classified as aggressive and candidates that we would like to add to our portfolio. Let's just pick a few here. Amberella, Netflix, Tesla. Let's say that we're going to add these three positions. We can see what that would do to the makeup of our portfolio. I'll just do a little quick arithmetic. Oh, is that your phone ringing? Look what happened. There it is. I told you I was quick. We're going to add these positions to the portfolio just like that and see what it does to our model. Now we've got three more companies there. We went from 9 to 12 percent and we went from 45 to 40, about 44. I don't remember what these were, but we can all, we can see what they are now. What I forgot to show you earlier was I have a pivot table set up in here. It can easily show me a lot of different data and I can change what I want to look at and it just gives me a graphical impression of the portfolio's allocation. Right now I've got the pivot table set up to have the sectors and super sectors on the rows and I've got asset class going down the columns. We've got 13 growth companies. Let's clean this up. We've got 13 aggressive companies. Four are consumer cyclical. Six technology, one industrials, one in communication services. That must be a Netflix position. If we'd rather look at the sum of the overall percentage of the portfolio. If I want to switch the asset classification to say market cap, we can see that about 15% of our portfolio are large cap technology stocks, 18% technology, 20% in consumer cyclical, about 16% in large caps, six of that in giants. Just a real easy way to view information and better understand the portfolio. I hope you enjoyed uh, looking at this video. Hopefully it can give you some ideas, understand the way I'm thinking about things, maybe give you an idea of what you could do to make your own portfolio better. I always enjoy learning and if you have any comments or constructive criticism for me, I'd love to hear it. Please comment below. I really enjoyed doing this kind of analysis. It gives me a better idea of the overall picture of our portfolio. If I'm picking companies and I'm only looking at these specific companies, I could find myself allocated completely in large technology companies. And this helps me take a step back and look at the, the forest and not just the trees, if you like analogies. Thanks for watching and have a great day.